got more people joining. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning. Where are you where are you coming from? Uh Lutz, Florida. Oh so, wonderful. Yeah, it's by Tampa, Wesley Chapel area. Yeah, I know exactly where it is. Oh cool. Most people don't. <laughs> No, I, I know because at Stetson we have a we have a number of alumni in that area and parents. So oh really? Yeah, that's pretty cool. We just moved here in August, so I haven't really had a chance to like explore yet because we moved like in the middle of everything. COVID, right? <laughs> when things calm down, we'll do some events over there in that area, so you'll get to know some other alumni. That would be fun. Yeah. Hi, Amy. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing chair yoga today, so I won't be uh, screaming help with the cramp. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting double workout because I, I did a, a rowing class this morning and now I'm doing this. <laughs> it's yeah, like my awesome. line down. <laughs> awesome. That's actually a good point, Rena. So as uh, folks are still gathering, um, you know, I, this is an all levels class and it is chair yoga. Um, so I have just a, a folding chair that I've uh, cut the back out of. So it can be anything as uncomfortable as that. <laughs> um, or it can really even be like, you know, a, a lounge chair, a chair that you sit in, um, a chair on your patio. It can really be any kind of chair, um, but we'll be seated and we'll be uh, practicing some postures that way. It'll be a short practice. Um, and then our yoga practice will lead us into a meditation practice. Again, a short meditation. Um, so if you'd like to find a chair now, you won't need any other props um, unless your chair is uncomfortable like mine. I have a blanket. Um, so again, just any blanket or pillow that you grab off of your couch will work. Um, and then depending on your height, so Ideally, what you want in your chair is a flat, um, a flat line here. So if you, if you are tall, that might mean putting a little more height under the bum to lift your hips, um, you know, so that it doesn't look like this when you're sitting in the chair. Or if you're shorter, you actually might need to add something under the feet because um, if you're short and maybe your legs aren't quite touching the ground, you want to maintain that contact with your base. So as we have a couple uh, more people joining, just, you know, take a couple moments and, uh, and rummage around in your house. Uh, I think once you, once you start practicing with props, everything in your house becomes a prop. <laughs> it's just kind of fun. We will wait one more minute and then we'll go ahead and get started and I'll keep admitting people as they come if they come a little bit late. So. Sounds great. Yeah. I was just going to demonstrate for so these are yoga blocks. You don't have to have blocks. You can also use like a big book, like maybe uh, a dictionary or you know, a book that you, you, uh, you have on hand, but I don't know if you can see, but this is how you would raise the base okay. for your feet. So. Okay, I think we should go ahead and get started. I'll keep an eye on the waiting room and admit folks as they come. Thank you everybody for joining us this morning. We're really grateful to be here in, um, in fellowship with you and I'm so excited for my dear friend and colleague Lindsay to lead us this morning and some peace and some meditations and some yoga so thanks Lindsay I'll turn it over to you thank you Rena so I think uh, Nicole mentioned that you know she's already had a workout this morning and my hope is actually that this time together will be um, you know, a little less of a workout, uh, not intense per se, but a time to um, connect and go inward um, and just uh, you know, be present with yourself, be present with your body and move in a way that feels good. 
Um, so yoga isn't about making yourself uncomfortable or twisting yourself up into a pretzel just so you can make a certain shape. Um, for me anyway, my yoga practice is about feeling good in my body and feeling a sense of ease. And so that's what I'm approaching my practice with today. And that's what I would invite you to approach your practice with too. Um, one note about your cameras, you're completely welcome to leave them off. Um, if you'd like to turn them on, you can. Um, that way I can offer feedback, but um, not a critique or anything like that, just um, you know, feedback in real time. But if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine. So um, the way that we'll start, actually, we'll start in the chair. And I want to start by bringing a sense of quiet to the nervous system. So in your chair, just really allow your body to sink. Just feel your body in your chair. You don't have to hold yourself up or support yourself. This should be a comfortable, relaxed posture. And I just want you to take a moment, start to rub the hands together. You can close the eyes here if that feels good to you. So just bringing a little bit of energy into the hands. And then from here, take the hands and place them behind the head, maybe on the neck, and just start to check in. Have you been feeling tension there? And where can you release? Where can you let go just a little bit? Starting to connect to your breath. It's just a gentle breath. Nothing forceful. And then removing the hands from the head and neck, make a cup shape and put them around your ears. So I don't know about you, but I've been listening to a lot of things lately. And just this, this simple act of blocking out sound just for a minute feels so relaxing to me. Staying connected to the breath. And then moving down from the ears to the jawline. Again, just feeling, is there tension there? Has your jaw been tight? And just feel if there's any way you can release a little bit using the tool of your breath. And now moving the hands, placing the base of the palms on your cheekbones and the fingertips on the hairline. Feel the sensation of the eyes being covered. Gentle breaths here. And then move the hands to the shoulders. And just the upper shoulders, you're draping your arms over, you're letting them hang, feeling really heavy in the arms. If this doesn't feel good in your body or in your arms, you can also cross them across your chest. So whichever feels better to you, and just letting the weight of the arms hang. I know many of us hold tension here in our upper shoulders. So again, connecting with an easy breath and seeing if we can release a little bit more. And then from here, actually just give yourself a little hug. <laughs> this can feel really good. Um, we all know how amazing hugs feel. And we've, if you're like me, you've been missing hugs lately. So just take a moment to connect. And when you're ready, bring the hands to heart center. So that's just a quick, easy grounding practice that you can use anytime if you're feeling 
overwhelmed, if you're feeling anxious, you know, just really putting yourself in contact with some of those places that carry tension can be really helpful. Okay, so now we're going to move into um, a very common posture. It's called Tadasana, but we'll do it from a seated position. So we'll work from the foundation up and we'll start with the feet. So I'm just gonna show you on my foot, I don't know if you can see, but our feet have four corners. I don't know if you knew this about the feet. So the ball of the big toe mound, the pinky toe mound, and then on either side of the heel. Those are the four corners of the feet. And so just pick up either foot, it doesn't matter, put it in your lap, or if that, if you don't have the flexibility in your hips for that, you can actually just bend over and feel. But I want you to feel in your foot. So feel the ball of your toe mound, the big toe mound, pinky toe mound, and the two places on the heel, the inner and outer heel. So when you're standing on your foot, evenly and equally, you're standing on all four corners. So try placing your foot down and feeling all four corners. Even though you're seated, feel a very grounded foot and spread the toes as wide as you can, as wide as feels comfortable, and really ground down through the heel. So do the same thing on the other foot, spreading the toes, grounding down through the heel. So that's your base, again, even though we're not standing. We want our feet to be awake. We want them to be active. Now I'll just turn to show you. We're, as we move up the foundation, you're looking for the knee and the ankle to be aligned. So you want ankle directly under knee, and you're making a nice L shape with your legs here. So moving up the foundation to the hips, See if you can feel in your chair, can you feel your sit bones? If you don't know what your sit bones are, um, whenever you're sitting on the bleachers at a football game or a sporting event, those things that start to hurt, <laughs> those are your sit bones. So feel them, you can put your hands on your hips and feel what it feels like to tip your hips forward just a bit, and rock the hips back just a bit. So when your hips are tilted forward, that's a forward tilt, and then backward tilting the hips. So try to move ever so slightly until it feels like in your body, your hips are in neutral. They're not tipping forward, they're not tipping back, they're in neutral, and you feel those sit bones in contact with the chair. Good. And then from here, we'll move to the torso. So we want an elongated torso. There's four sides to our torso, right? Front, back, and the two sides. So imagine from those neutral hips growing up. So just imagine growing the torso, collarbones stretch forward, shoulders go back, and the arms can stay in your lap. They can move to the back of the chair and press in the back of the chair. And so this is a seated version of Tadasana. I'm gonna move my chair back forward. And now that you're here, can you reconnect with your breath? So on a big inhale, Imagine smiling from your collarbone, really opening that chest. And exhale, finding a sense of ease and settling in. We'll take one more breath here. Good. Now interlace the hands and Flip the palms forward towards the ceiling and bring the arms to straight. So maintaining that lift in the torso as you straighten the arms. 
We'll take two breaths here. And again, on the inhale, trying to reach a bit higher, grow that torso. And on the exhale, release and relax a bit more. Bringing the arms down and flipping the palms back to upright. Stretch your palms out in front of you as you gently lean forward and cat the back. So to cat the back, you're allowing, you know, cat cow, that's a very common move where you're on all fours. We're catting the back, but everything else is in Tadasana. And our arms are reaching forward. The neck can even release here. And so we'll do that sequence one more time. Come back to center. On the inhale, flip the palms up towards the sky. And exhale, flip the palms down to cat. Inhale, palms up. Exhale, cat the back. So do that two more times to the count of your own breath. And you can close your eyes here if you want, but really feel the release and feel the sense of ease in your body. And when you've done your two times, hands back to center. They can be at heart center or just resting in your lap. Now we're going to do a forward fold. Um, so if you need to widen your knees a bit, you can do that. You can just kind of heel toe them out just slightly. And again, you want to try to maintain the ankle directly under the knee. And for this forward fold, we'll start to tip the hips forward. So a forward tilt in the hips, and then moving at your own degree, if it's comfortable for you, interlace the hands back behind you as you allow the torso to tilt forward. The head relaxes. And take a few breaths here. On your last exhale, release the arms, take the hands to both of the knees, and pressing into the palm, lift your torso back up. I love that one. That one feels so good. Okay, good. So now we'll go to Eagle Pose. Eagle Pose seated. So let's root down through the left leg as we take the right leg up and over. So you can just cross it once like this. You can actually loop the foot around, I don't know if you can see, and tuck it behind to your own degree, whatever feels best for you. But the legs are wrapped together, hips stay neutral, and the arms wrap as well. So take the left arm up in front of the face, take the right arm over the left, and interlace the hands. Um, palms are open. Sorry, it's hard to see. <laughs> so here's what my arms look like. Palms are open towards one another. My right arm is above my left. And your arms are up in front of the face. Feeling this stretch, opening the back. Take two more breaths here. And on your next exhale, unwind the arms, uncross the legs. Take just a moment to pause in neutral. And then change sides. So picking the left leg up, 
cross it over the right. Leaving it in a crossed leg is fine, like maybe the way that you would normally sit uh, at work or when you're having coffee. And if you want to tuck the foot in, you do. Taking the left arm up, this will be your top arm this time. Moving the right arm under it and connecting to the breath. We'll be here for three breaths. And on your next exhale, unwind the arm, unwind the legs. We'll do one more small chest opener to prepare for our meditation sit. So just from our Tadasana hips and legs, interlacing the hands and make sure the elbows are tucked. They're pretty close to your torso. Um, they can be touching, but elbows are, are squeezed in here. And with the elbows in, allow your wrists to separate and pull the wrists away from one another. So what you might be feeling here, the arms are active, right? The chest is active and it's broadening the chest. So on an exhale, come back to center. It's actually quite intense if you're pulling, if you're pulling the hands. So on an inhale, feel the pull. And on an exhale, release. One more time, inhale, pull. And exhale, release. So maybe you feel a bit more open in your chest. The shoulders maybe come back a little bit easier. And again, I just love to picture my collarbone smiling forward. I think that that really helps me to feel that here. So this kind of torso with a tall spine, this is the posture that we want to take into our meditation practice. So it's not a forceful, you know, we're not so rigid that we're uncomfortable, but it's just a tall, a tall spine. So as we move into our sit, it'll just be a brief sit. Um, if you're comfortable where you are, I invite you to stay there. I'm going to move to a chair on the floor um, because that's a little more comfortable in my body. And as you're setting up for your practice, pillows, pillows are wonderful. Um, I have two here in my chair. Um, so, you know, this idea that we can't feel comfortable if we're meditating or if we're practicing yoga, I'm not sure where that came from. Um, but I think caring for our body in these times and in these practices is key because if we want this to be a lifelong practice, um, we have to bring a sense of care to it. So supporting the back, if that feels good for you, um, that can feel really nice in your body. And coming to a gentle cross leg, legs stretched out in front, just finding a sense of ease in the body. So for this time, um, I would invite you, if you have any silent meditation practice, you're welcome to practice that. Um, and I will share a brief technique that, uh, that the Stetson Meditation Club, which is a student organization on campus, um, they practice and they share with the campus. So for this technique, again, um, a comfortable seated position, whatever that means for you. Um, the hands, try to feel a sense of relaxation in your hands. So maybe that's placing them on your knees, maybe that's folding them in your lap, Whatever really helps you feel that sense of release there is the best posture for you. And then when you're ready, gently close the eyes, not squeezing them shut, but just almost as if you're going to sleep. Feel that nice, tall, supportive spine. 
and feel a sense of ease in your breath. In this practice, we actually won't be connecting with the breath. The body will continue its functions as normal. And instead, we'll bring our attention to a place located between and behind the eyebrows. It's often called the mind's eye. And you just gently look from that place about eight to 10 inches in front of the forehead. You're not visualizing or creating anything, just looking into the darkness in front of you. And as you look, the mind will become active because that's just what it does. The mind will send you all sorts of thoughts, thoughts of the past, thoughts of the future, thoughts that you've never even thought before. And so to combat the activity of the mind, think of a calming word or phrase that helps you feel uplifted and brings you peace. If you're a theist, this could be maybe a name of God that you're comfortable with or an attribute of the divine. If you're not a theist, maybe this is simply the word peace, or today I choose joy, or I am loving awareness. So any word or phrase that helps you feel both calm and uplifted. And you'll repeat that phrase, not out loud, but in your mind slowly and perhaps at intervals. So if your word is peace, it would sound like this. Peace. 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 And you would continue. Now again, the mind will be sending you thoughts. And so if, that, if you find that happening, you can increase the speed of your repetition. So you can say it a bit faster so the thoughts can't sneak in. And if you find a more focused and sustained concentration, you can slow down the speed of your repetition. So even with your looking, even with your repeating your calming word or phrase, the mind will still wander. And when it does that, just notice and sweetly and gently, lovingly, just bring your attention back to your center focus of looking and repeating your word or phrase. This meditation will be for five minutes. There'll be a bell at the beginning that you'll hear, and then I'll bring you out at the end.
Neva. So thank you all so much for being here this morning, for taking the time to be together in community, anywhere from New York to here in Florida. Um, it's so special to be together, even though it looks different in these times. Um, and also thank you for taking time for yourself. You know, these are incredibly challenging times that we're facing and just remembering these simple practices um, of sitting in quiet, of becoming in touch with our bodies. Um, you know, these are the skills, uh, these are the practices that build the skills of compassion and empathy and kindness um, that our new steps and president, Christopher Wilkie, talks about a lot. Um, and I really appreciate uh, the wisdom that he imparts to our community on those values. Um, and, you know, those are skills just like anything else. Um, and so these are some of the practices that can help us build those skills. So thank you all so much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, and we can officially end our recording, um, but then I'm also happy to stick around and answer.